Hello. I'm going to take you through today something called comparative advantage. It's a economic concept that really confuses students, particularly when they're first starting to study economics, a little bit because of the math that's involved, although the math is actually very basic. But I think secondly, it's just because the study of economics is still relatively new. So today I'm going to take you through a, a simple way of, of making our way successfully through a comparative advantage analysis in economics. First things first, let's define comparative advantage. It's defined as the ability to produce a good or service at a lower opportunity cost compared to somebody else. Now we could be comparing uh, different individuals in terms of completing tasks, we could be comparing two firms, or we could be comparing two economies. But today, what we're going to be doing is comparing two people and the output associated with two people. And I'm going to take me, and I'm going to take one of my colleagues, Barry Gilmore. We're both teachers. We're going to assume for this exercise that we are grading exactly the same papers and in exactly the same way. So there's not going to be really any quality difference compared to the way Barry is grading or the way I'm grading. Likewise, we're going to be comparing our, our test writing abilities and for the sake of simplicity we're going to assume that Barry's tests are identical to mine so there's no quality difference there. First thing we have to do is we have to look at the information that we're given. So in this case it looks like Barry can grade 10 papers or he can write four tests. I can grade two papers or I can write four tests. We then have to figure out the comparative advantage. That's usually what the problems ask us to do. And here's a really quick way to do it. If I want to figure out the comparative advantage of Barry and, and myself, I first have to figure out the opportunity costs associated with Barry producing papers and then Barry producing tests. Let's find an easy way to do that. If I want to figure out what Barry's given up or the opportunity cost when he writes papers, I really want to figure out how many tests he's giving up when he writes one paper. How do I do that? Let's just simply divide both sides by 10. 10 papers divided by 10 equals 1. So when I write one paper, how many tests do I give up? Let's divide that by 10 and I get 4 tenths or 2 fifths. So when Barry writes a paper, he gives up two-fifths of a test. So I'm going to erase that now. I'm going to write the opportunity cost two-fifths right next to this 10. That tells me what his opportunity cost is when he's grading papers. Now we're going to do the same thing for Barry writing tests. How do I do that? Again, let's just divide by four when Barry writes one test, how many papers is he giving up? We divide this side by four and that reduces down to uh, what uh, five halves. So Barry would give up two and one half papers when he decides to write a test. So likewise, I'm going to blot some of this out and I'm going to make a note of Barry's opportunity costs when he writes tests. Now, I've got to do the same thing for me. When I write papers, how many tests do I give up? Like we did with Barry, divide by two. One paper, two tests. What are my opportunity costs when I grade a paper? I give up two tests. Do the same thing over here now. What are my opportunity costs when I write tests? Divide by four, one test, divide by four, one half a paper. Make a note of that. So now I've figured out my opportunity costs. Then our analysis ends with the simple matter of figuring out who's got the lower opportunity costs in producing papers or producing tests. When Barry writes a paper, he gives up two, two fifths of a test. When I write a paper, I give up two tests. Barry's opportunity costs are lower. He has comparative advantage in writing papers. 
When Barry writes tests, he gives up two and a half papers. When I write tests, I only give up one half of a paper. My opportunity costs are lower, and therefore I have a comparative advantage in producing tests. I hope that's a very easy way of helping you figure out these analyses in questions involving comparative advantage. We'll see you soon.